Amen, everybody. This is Zach Humphreys, Public Proclaimer Ministries, and here we are again at University of North Texas. The day is just getting started, and uh, the crowd is already getting prepared, but here we are. Here's some of the brothers. Amen. Say hello, everybody. Hello. 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 His truth endures forever. Amen. His love Amen. 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 endures Amen. forever. Amen. Are you willing to submit to us? What's up, brother? Hey, how are you? So we have a lot more brothers coming. The day's getting started, so y'all be in prayer for us. Enjoy the video. is evidence okay, because but, uh, wait, wait, everything on, has to match there has to be a sufficient says, cause but everyone says that. that's what because it's so obvious it's the first truth of reason it's the first truth of reason god exists to deny god is to be a fool God is so obvious, of course everybody says everything that exists is proof of him. Even the homosexual is proof of God. Because God made you in your mother's womb as a little baby. But you can know true Muslims. It's two plus two, four. It's two plus two, four. You're just denying that we can know religious truth. You're okay with scientific fact. You're okay with mathematical fact. You're okay with logical truth, but you're not okay with religious truth. That's a bias. And that's denying the fact that you can know truth in religion. No, you're okay with it because you don't want to serve Jesus Christ. The only reason we call um what is it we're classifying organisms, right? The only reason we call them all the same thing across the whole world, the only reason you all know shape the same as me is because we've all agreed on it. But no, 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 no. Agreeance does not mean something is true. Everyone can say two plus two is five, it's still four. There are certain objective truths all of society could deny, and it would still be true. You can have the same valuable truth. You can have the same type of truth in religion as much as you can in scientific truth. You're all saying the same thing. You're all saying that I'm right. All of you are disgusting. You're all going to hell. And all the I didn't say that. Literally every religion says that. It's not that I don't believe that there could be a God. Yes, it is. I don't. But then why don't you see God yourself and he'll show you? You must not have because you still don't know if it's true. Seek, seek, seek. No, they are not saying the same S. Islam says God doesn't have a son. Christianity says God has a son. That's not the same thing. I'm talking about belief. Not, not, not what the history says. I'm talking about belief. Like, we're the right religion. You better choose us or you're going to insert whatever. A lot of religions don't say that. Hindus don't say that. Buddhists don't say that. The religion of atheism doesn't say that. I'm not an atheist. Yes, because it's true. Christians are people of truth. It doesn't say black people, it says black lives matter. All lives matter. Jesus died for white people. I'm not 
Jesus, Jesus died for black people. How do you know Jesus was white? How do you know? He wasn't white, was he wasn't white or black. He was Middle Eastern. Wow! Exactly. That's me. That's me. He was of an olive, an olive color. Okay. The, which one? The black one. Just go talk to him. This is too busy. Go down there and talk to them. Oh my gosh! That's a good banner for you Lesbos, right there. You know, you have a use. Your use is to stay at home and make babies. That's your use. The Bible says the natural use of the woman is to bear children. Why do lesbians have ovaries? My cousin was a homosexual and she got born again. What is it? No. Yes, I do. That's really sad. Yeah, Mike, I have a wonderful family, not a homoing lesbo daughter. Thank God. Thank God. You are ashamed of your parents, an embarrassment to our culture, an embarrassment to society. It's people like you that ruin the country. It's useless lesbos like you. You need to repent. What, what guy hurts your feelings? Why did you do this? A male hurt you somewhere along the line. No. She has, she obviously has a dad problem or something, obviously. It doesn't say if you believe in it, it says if you are. Okay, I am. I ask them that, it's not my banner. Yeah, Black Lives Matter promotes just Black Lives Matter. All lives matter. All lives matter. No, no, no. Technically, the only thing in culture that doesn't matter is a white, straight male. That's the only thing that doesn't matter. Absolutely. Because you're still a sinner. No, I'm not. It's not from gay to straight, it's lost to save. You need save. That's not salvation. You were dipped in water, sinner, and you come up a wet sinner. That's just water. I agree with you. I have a full-time job. I work in neuroscience. I'm not telling. Wicked! 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 This is not the clubs, college students. This is a place of higher learning. I want you to remember something I want to tell you. Jesus Christ can save your life and make you new. No, you're denying that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 for you lesbos. Remember this, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. 6, 9, remember this verse. I know you can, you lesbos can remember 6, 9. Know you not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, that's sexually wicked, nor the idolaters, nor the adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor the whole sexual shall inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians 6 9 Lesbos. Ho homosexuals. The point of it is lesbians satisfy their sexual lust at the cost of another soul. And it's wicked, wicked, wicked. I would say that we're in a and I love you guys while I'm here. You need to repent. You want to still keep just turn this off. And pass it off to whoever you want. I'll pass it off now. Brother, you want to preach for a minute? I don't care what kind of situation you've grown up in. I grew up with uh, barely a high school education. Yeah. Making four dollars an hour. You want to preach for a minute? Sure, I will. Sorry, brother. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you guys. That's no, all right. Okay, you gotta. I'll take, take this for a minute. There you go. You better hold this thing because I'm, I'm about to lose. So we put this clip right here, right? On your shirt collar. Or your. Uh... Right here? Uh... Yeah, it's in that slot. Can I borrow your bottle? Sure. We gotta get you animal lovers out there! Animal lovers, I'm not talking bestiality! Get your animal lovers! I'm gonna tell you a story! Listen to the story! Yes, I will! Listen to the story! I'm gonna tell you about a dog and a drunken owner! That's our Christian whores out here. Wicked, wicked whores. Okay, so we'll kick out. Yeah. Man, everybody, this is Zach Humphrey again, Public Proclaimer Ministries. You've seen a little bit of preaching a minute ago. Uh, the students are really wild, and by the time that I started preaching, they were already pretty stirred up. So there wasn't a lot I could do at that point in time to really reason with them. Uh, with this many preachers, they're just kind of in shock mode right now. But uh, there's the crowd I want to show you. There it is. Uh, the battle is being waged uh, right now at University of North Texas. The preacher last year looks a lot like last year. It's a little smaller response than last year as of right now. But uh, we're hoping to stir things up even better here shortly. So uh, in the meantime, just uh, enjoy the video and keep, uh, keep proclaiming that Jesus is King. Amen.
No, we're all conservative. Every drunkard goes to hell. Nobody, I, we're all in unity here. Uh, it's 100% coherent. I mean, I know them all personally, so. I don't need a pass to be here. I'm not preaching right now. It's, well, I mean, it's been fulfilled in Christ. Uh, no, we're not Jews. You have to think logically about the Bible. I mean, you, to, you don't. Nobody reads an ancient book of literature and thinks as ignorantly as they do about the Bible. That does, no, that doesn't make any sense. That was written literally to a certain nation, a certain group of people. It was not written to Americans. We're Gentiles. We're not Jews. That's. I mean, that's logic. That's that's. That's just reading the literature for what it is. Even if it's not even if it's not true, that's logical understanding of the text. I'm not driving any, but I'm, what's inflammatory about logic? Because we're just are you paying attention to that? It's a really crappy way to talk to people. You're I'm being super loving. I love you guys. I love you too. I'm homosexual. It's okay. I love you. That's yes, I, I, I'm not okay with that, but I do love you too. And I, no, 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 no touching. You love me. I just want you to go to heaven. I do too. No, 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 no. And I'd like to go with you. Okay, well, you need to repent. Just don't be. I, I repent. Be homo no mo. I will be homo no more if you hug me. No, 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 no. I'm not okay with the talk, with the touching. Sure? No, no, no. Not, not okay with the homo. You were being loving a moment ago. No, no, no. I, I love you guys to beg you to think logically about the scriptures. And I would think logically about it. Yeah. No, 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 no. I know what you do with those hands. Masturbate to gay porn. I don't want those gay hands touching me. No, Are no, no, you no. sure? No, 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 no. No, it's harassment. Don't harass me. Don't harass me. I know what you do with those hands. The fisting, the gay porn masturbation. I know all that. And then, so, there's the preaching at UNT. Uh, homosexuals trying to grab hold of me up there, evidently. He was very interested in the touching, so got to be careful with these uh, homos. So, brother, do you want me to fly that for a bit? Yeah, if you want to fly that. It's, it's really hard to hold, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there's a brother. How long you been preaching? I'm glad you put it down, honestly. I'm glad to see that. 1960s, he's been open air preaching. Amen. All right, so I want to make this very clear, okay? So, in society, you have a choice to make. You have to choose between yourself and your
it has it. What we have exactly the word of God. Exactly the word of God. So we have evidence of the contrary to that by the God of God. Like what is our end game? Yeah. Exactly. You personally not as a good idea. No, I can tell you the whole group is in unity. Uh -huh. to see soul say. Oh, I read that. That's translated. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Like, there's a lot of mistranslations in the NIV and the NLTV. Yeah. 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 Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. I know there's a future judgment. And so knowing that in day, I, I live now in light of eternity. For myself first, I and mean, I gotta examine myself daily. Then in light of eternity, for my neighbor, we come out here to tell our neighbor the same message that Christ died for them. He rose again. He's able to change who they are right now. So in your opinion, are you coming from a place of love? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So if you're coming from a place of love, do you think that it is beneficial to kind of so if I'm in the random person in the church and I see everything that's happening, I can tell you if that you are coming to judge us and telling us what we're doing is wrong. That may not be your intent, but perception is just as important as reality, right? Well, I can't help how I perceive. Right. That that's more of an individual experience that so they went through than they affect their way to see. Right, but do you think that it's kind of important to know that even though you think you're coming from a place of love, when you stand on a proverbial pedestal, people are going to come out with love. They're going to think you're coming higher. Like, well, I mean, I'm not on a pedestal, bro. It's a proverbial pedestal. In the sense that, like, you come with well, Christians are better than sinners, so they feel worse. No. They're saints. But it says in the Bible that, like, from the original sin, even with the apple, everybody who ever is and was and will be are sinners. Now, I don't agree with the original sin. However, I do agree that we all have chosen to sin of our own free will. Okay. And as such, we are the cause of our own sinfulness. Okay. We have our own original sin. Whenever we go to the age of moral accountability, right. understanding and proceeding right with wrong, some people don't get there through maybe a mental illness or they die before there is a moral accountability. They're guiltless. And we know that to be a first truth of reason, but why? Because they never reach an age when they can be accountable for moral actions. So you, it's impossible that you should be able to be a sinner prior to moral accountability because sinner by nature is one who sins. So, you know, our moral accountability begins, maybe you're 8 years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, depending on what home you grow up in. But we all develop there if we have time to develop morally speaking. So in that sense, we become sinners. Adam's fall has brought us into a sinful world, but it does not necessitate our personal moral uh, moral sinfulness. We originate that ourselves. Okay. So we're not blamed for an illness that we have. We're blamed for rebellion that we have. And that's why sin's a crime and not a disease, according to scriptures. The Bible also says, at least in my personal, from what I remember, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that I'm supposed to be wrong, right? Well, it says do not judge hypocritical judgment. So first get the plank out of your eyes, then you're able to cast the plank out of your neighbor. So how is he a How is that not what every Muslim is a jihadist. Every that banner says every true Muslim is a jihadist, and I agree with that because I've read the Quran and it commands uh, jihad. I know the first half is loving, the second half is jihad. Not every. No, the whole Quran, like the within the first 30 pages, mentions that if you find a Jew behind a rock or a Christian, the people of the book is the word it uses. But the book was the Bible that they're referring to. And so people of the book are to be put to death. And so, of course, Quran came 600 years after the New Testament church was formed. Paul warned in Galatians 1 6 that angels would come in bringing other gospels. Let them be accursed. Mormons have visions of angels that brought them Mormonism. Jehovah Witnesses had visions from angels that brought them in Jehovah Witness doctrine. 
Islam has had their visitation from angels brought in Islam. All of this after Christ. It's a fulfillment of Galatians 1.6 with Paul. So it's a cult. It's not from Jesus Christ, but I believe it was really from angels. But that all because something comes from a spiritual being doesn't mean it should be trusted. What particular denomination are you most curious? I'm non-denominational. I go to a holiness church and I'm evangelical, but a Protestant, but I'm not I'm not Roman Catholic. But uh, I don't really identify as one denomination or other. I preach across the board right. in so all sorts of ways. You know, as, as I have heard from my family, that also Christian Jesus came and said that for the first half of the Bible, the Old Testament, no more. I come, I wash it all away. I believe what I say from now on. Is the Old Testament is to follow Christians. Do you all think it's done? Well, the New Test, the Old Testament is not done away with, in the sense that it doesn't matter and we shouldn't read it. Jesus said, "Not one jot or tittle will pass away from the law till everything be fulfilled." The problem people struggle with, the first five books of the Old Testament were written to Israel, a nation of people. They were not written to Gentiles. When God sent his prophets to Gentiles, he sent them to preach repentance towards God. In light of the law that was binding on Gentiles also, that's the moral law. The moral law is the law of reason, the law of intelligence, the law of love. That's binding on all of us because we're made in God's image. And as such, it's binding on us as well. Gentile or Jew. God gave specific law to Jews. The ceremonial law for the temple, which is no more. The animal sacrifice, which is no more. Read Hebrews 9 and 10 for that. He also gave them civil law as a nation. Things that were good for them to eat. Things that they should abstain from, which make a lot of sense for that time in human history. So we are not Israel in, in 4,000 years ago. My point in saying that is, I was that was never binding on me if I had lived then. I was not Israel. But if I wanted to come to Jehovah through the through Israel, I had to come through the animal sacrifice and through the covenants. But those were only a type and shadow of what was to come, the truth. Right, which I, I agree with that. But then my question becomes, if that was very particular to that time, isn't it possible to conceive that the Bible should also change as we as no. the world changes? No. What I mean by that, what was changed, what was changed was the civil and ceremonial relationship of God to man. Now Jesus is the one mediator between God to man. Nothing was changed about the moral standards of God. Having sex with a child was still a sin. He told that to Israel not to do that. Uh, abusing your neighbor, that's still condemned in Israel, it's condemned now. Lying, cheating, stealing, blasphemy. The moral law of God has never changed, ever. But God's relationship to man has changed change based off the atonement of his son. Now we don't go through a priest, we go straight to God through Christ. I guess my point so is that, that it can't change because the moral law is founded in the nature of things. I guess my point is that if I were just someone standing out in the crowd, I would not come out and say that there was a whole lot of things that would be able to see. I have so much more respect journey than I ever would as just a large crowd because when you come with fire people react well there's a there's a natural psychological process that takes place with crowds anyway. oh, so that's part of the battle but usually what you find is, is the most reasonable people will come up and talk one-on-one, -on -one, or they'll be sporadically in and throughout the crowd uh, listening. So what I'm saying is you're always going to have the wild ones real up close, causing the scene. It's just the nature of things. Part of it's evil in them trying to hinder from people trying to hear the gospel. It's spiritual warfare. What you're seeing is genuine spiritual warfare. Paul preached in Ephesus. Paul preached in Ephesus. They had a riot and kicked him out of the city. Jesus had several riots and they tried to push him off the cliff twice. They tried to stone him a third time before they ever got him to the cross the fourth time. So there's always a response. Repentance or re uh, revival or riot. That's the two responses. Because all you can say is yes or no to God. Yes or no. Yes, revival, no, right. And so, I guess what I'll leave you with is this really short story. My aunt and uncle in the a place where they began as very conservative and they had a choice to change the 
is Carissa, which means to publicly proclaim. So we're called to witness and to preach. Not everybody's a preacher, though. So not every Christian is to go around and preach. But, but preach means also you know, to give testimony. In a sense, we ought all to preach the gospel. But the specific calling of open-air preaching to go out and proclaim, I understand not everybody's called to that. And the thing is, people need to understand who aren't is that this is a normal response to a message that people don't want to hear and is in conflict with their moral code as they're found or met when we show up here. So this is not abnormal. In fact, we're treated much better than Christians in other countries are treated. Oh, I know I've been there. So, so this is not even a normal. Blessed to see you. So grateful for you. Yes, man. God bless you. Thank you. I really am grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. So I, I'm really curious and wanted to better inquire. Can I get your name? My name is Noah. Noah, what's your last name? Noah Mile. Spell it better. Mike India Lima Alpha. Okay. Are you a student here? I'm a student. Okay. And what's your name? My name is Zachary Humphrey. Um, Minister of Public Proclaimer Ministries. I live in Kentucky. Okay. Can you explain for us why you think this is yeah. the best way to get the message out here? We're commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature in Matthew 28. He said, what I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, what I whisper in your ear, proclaim from the housetops in Matthew 10, 27. In Luke 14, 21, he said, go into, all the, uh, go into the highways and hedges and compel them to command that my house may be full. So that's the reason why we come into the public. Now, why do we use signs? Why do we have t-shirts? Why does any movement use a sign or any movement use a t-shirt but to promote their message? Nobody has a problem when a sports team uses a sign or a banner, and nobody asks them why they do that. Nobody asks why UNT sells t-shirts with UNT written on it. Nobody thinks that's weird. But then whenever you see a banner with Jesus' message on it, or a Bible verse, everybody suddenly is shocked and thinks that's just it's crazy. So it, I think it's more of a well, bias I mean, towards the, the message. Some of are pretty provoking. Yeah, like, uh, yeah we, have some, we have some that are uh, provoking to the common culture, but I would still say that they're true. And so uh, even provoking truth is sometimes important or necessary. Of course, mine, I could say Jesus saves from hell with a rainbow on it, and it would probably be more readily accepted than flames. But I, I don't really see the, how that can be condemnable in, in all respects of trying to get our message across. I mean, even if, if hell were real, speaking hypothetically, then I could never be too zealous to try and win my neighbor to Christ. I have lost friends that I witness to when I go to the gym. I, I talk to people when I go to work, and I'm not preaching in this nature there. But whenever I go into the public as a called preacher or an evangelist for God, which I claim to be, Caruso in Greek is to preach, and it means to publicly herald. Why here? Uh, well, locally this weekend, we're having the, the second annual National Open Air Preachers Conference in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. And so this is a great public university. I'm not from here, another brother is. And so he's just aware it's a good campus to preach on. And so that's why they chose to come to this university. But we do travel the country, preach on all different universities, festivals, parades, that sort of thing. Wherever we find the public, that's where we try to go. Thank you. No problem, thank you. Where is, where is the actual convention? What city? Uh, it's in Dallas, Fort Worth. Those, those are two different cities. Uh, sorry, it's in Fort, Fort Worth. Fort Worth, Texas. Actually in Fort Worth? Yes. You're sure? Yes, 100%. Okay. Do you have any 
Yeah, no problem. Man. I already gave you a track, right? No, you didn't. Uh, paint this guy? Yes. Okay. Hey, man. Good talking to you, brother. What's your name? Zach. Zach thanks. Yeah. Right. I'll see you later. Have a good time. Sure. Thank you. See Appreciate you. you. Man, so we just had an interview with the NBC News lady again from last year, um, asking me why we do what we do. And just a little background on what she was asking me was asking me why we use signs and banners, basically, uh, why the flames. And uh, so I was just letting her know uh, we all use signs and banners to get our message across in any movement. So, hello. And the first and the last splits the sky. And everyone will give an account for the deeds done in the body. The Bible calls this the day of reckoning. The day of recompense. When Jesus Christ comes to judge the living. Once he dries up and dies, we can no longer make it. So how's it going today, brother? It's it's going great, man. I think people are beginning to be convicted and be be awakened. They're having conversations about God. Right. We even have have some students and Christian uh, campus ministers here in San Antonio. I mean, here in uh, uh, Denton that have begun to join us. They're Amen. Holding signs. They're having conversations. Man, I can sense the Holy Spirit is, is dealing is, is dealing with sinners in this place. Right. And their only response is to mock the preaching of the gospel. That's the only. That's all they can do. The only so thing do. they can do, they don't, they don't, they don't have a reasonable response except, except to, to, to mock. So now tell me where, what's your name and where you work at normally, labor in the gospel? My, my name is Miguel. I normally labor at the UTSA campus. I love Jesus. I work with campus ministry there. I love college students, and I want them to repent, and I want them to turn from the wicked ways. Amen. I work there full time. There you go. There it is. You heard it from Miguel. There right. you go. Amen. Amen. So there's the battle. This gives a whole new understanding to keep on the firing line. There's the line of preachers. There's the line of sinners. What line are you keeping on? Keep on the firing line. There it is. There it is. We have a few campus Christians joining us today. Praise God. It's a great blessing. It's a great campus. 
Yeah, you've raised good kids, man. Great job. Great job. Wow, man. The height of stupid is the modern day college student. The height of stupid. Wow. Yeah. So. A lot smaller of a response today than yesterday, but it is a Friday. Having very, very, very good conversations right now. Thank God. So, amen. Enjoy the video, and uh, I'll let you all join back up in just a minute. ...is Lagianism. He believes in open theism. He believes in sinless perfectionism. Uh, Jesse Burrell is actually a well-known heretic. Uh, we have some of, the, some of the world's greatest scholars... Uh, I cannot believe that. I am so What you are seeing take place right now, <clears throat> some leading Calvinists, supposedly this guy's a leading Calvinist in the country, uh, came out to try and confront Jesse Morrell yesterday about his theology, and they debated. They tried to sneak up on Jesse to cause a scene. They tried to sneak up on Jesse to uh, catch him off guard, and Jesse defended the faith against the Calvinist. And so they've come out today to preach against uh, what we're doing, the Calvinist is. So uh, that's what you're seeing take place right now, is this guy down here is trying to cause the students not to hear the preaching. Uh, Come under the feet. 
Preaching against Jesse. I wanted to go down there and check this out, but these guys are coming and I wanna Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. Hey! Emilio is down there preaching against Jesse with his loudspeaker. Right on now? The other, right now on the other end. Do we need a bullhorn? Uh, Jesse's already preaching next to him. But Emilio set up right, do we right have, in front do we of have us. a bullhorn? Yes, yeah. Okay. He's all the way at the other end. That's what I'm saying. There he is.
Now she's racist. She's racist too. Racist too. Racist. You're so racist. Racist. Control your emotions, woman. Stop the racism. Stop the racism. Stop the racism. Thank you. It's an old heresy known uh, as Wesleyanism. So, hey, I tell you what, you know what Jesse believes? Just go look up the name Charles City. Because that's what Jesse is. He is the latest creation of Charles City. Just a matter of time. I can see your future. There you are. Riding on a horse. How you doing, Ace? Good. Oh, yeah, I got plenty of tracks. Yeah, because I brought it on. Oh, wow. Just use discernment. Don't give them to people who are going to throw them in the trash. Hey man, we have students out here joining us. The campus is in a riot. We have a Calvinist down the road trying to drown us out. So uh, Jesus will gain the victory. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, brothers and sisters, here's the line. So, this gives a whole new meaning to keep on the firing line. So that you see your need of Jesus. There it is. Amen. Believe it or not, I used to be a sinner. Amen. For all, it's not the God of the Bible. It is the serpent that appears in the Garden of Eden. He, he, he is of his father, the devil, and therefore he deceives. According to Jesus and I, you and I cannot possibly be saved by Jesus. Actually... He that sins is of the devil. That's you. He that sins is of the devil. He that sins is of the devil. He that commits sin. We can become the righteousness. This guy sins daily in word, in thought, and in deed. You heard it here. Jesse Morrell rejects imputation. He rejects Oh my. Heartbreaking. This guy is mad because he debated that guy yesterday. The guy in the hat debated him yesterday and ate him alive and he come out here because he's butt hurt today about it. That's why he's saying what he's saying. Because that's, Je that's Jesse down there. Oh, yeah, but I got a question for you. Do okay. you live a sinless life? Of course. That's what a Christian is. Is it a good conversation? Oh, yeah, at the end. Yeah. Oh! 
Without one man, you will not see God. And I've had sex before marriage. It calls them to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. And that's why we're here today showing the true love of What are you talking about? I had a one hour conversation with him yesterday. He told me what he believed. He believed that he's sinless. He believed that God doesn't know the future. He believes, that, he believes that he's sinless and that you have to be sinless. What else is there to talk about? He's, so, he's so a you're sitting today? It won't dialogue, man. Tragic. So tragic. You are just upset because Jesse ate you alive yesterday and White had to come try and save the day for you. That's why you're so upset. White had to try and help you out and you're still butthurt about yesterday. That's what's upset with you. You really let the Calvinists down, brother. I'm just letting you know. You really did. But I love you. Jesus died for you and I know he did because he died for everybody. You Calvinists can get saved. It is true. It is true. How's it going today, sir? You having fun? Sharing Jesus with people, amen. topic of free will. Oh, good! Which is what I wrote a book yeah, on. Would love to. And, uh, I think he would. And, and I, I would love to. I don't speak for him, but I'm sure But he I'm going to post my response to this Calvinist cult uh, in a few days. They embarrassed themselves yesterday. James White embarrassed so, himself even so, more. Okay, there you uh, have it. We got it on record, everybody. Supposed to be the so, scholar, he was so just to confirm. Just to confirm. Is there a difference between the words win and if? On free will. Are the words when and if different? Did you see the video that he posted yesterday? It was horrible. That was, yeah, I would totally debate that guy. Okay. Great. Great. Between you and me, is he the homosexual? He looks awful, family. You can ask him yourself. Ask him yourself. <laughs> he was bending his wrist. And smoke your cigars. Drink your That's the truth, man. That was great. Wow. I am blown away by all that experience today. <laughs> I'm shocked. We, what do you think? We have shaken the inner core of the Calvinist community. And that's an honor. Oh? Yes. Amen. Hey, Amen. So there you go. That's the Calvinist cult. Of course, they hail James White as their cult. And, uh, you know, uh, they're uh, really just modern-day Gnostics. You know, the early church was always debated. Oh, <laughs> 
drinking of the living water. But anyway, back to the dog. This guy comes home. He's drunk out of his mind. And this dog goes, arr, arr, arr. The response, honestly, normal would be us being killed today for doing this. That would be normal. So. Your enemies. You can't be calling them uh, pieces of poop. Um, we're not fecal matter over here, but we are telling you this. We love you, we cherish you, we desire the best for you. So if you call me a piece of poop, I'll take the money. I'm sorry to I want you guys to be Amen. So this is University of North Texas. You can tell Jim Gillis is getting a round of poor treatment. Uh, the loving students of University of North Texas are giving us good treatment today. Very open-minded, very uh, willing to dialogue, not. So this is normal open-air preaching on a college campus 2019. So uh, please pray for University of North Texas. Thank <laughs> you. 
close up shop for the day uh, getting ready to depart so you'll get to see our departure here momentarily uh, from this crowd of haters uh, back to our vehicle so uh, let's see how it goes amen Stopping your sinning daily. Can't stop that, man. They wouldn't know God if you hit him in the face, man. Well, until he does, right? In the judgment. Well, there you go. Yes. Yeah. Don't do core class because it's gonna We are making a departure from the university right now, brothers, those who are watching. 
can be a dangerous time, so the police are having our backs, uh, especially with a rowdy crowd of two or three hundred homosexuals. Uh, you're not safe. After you've preached them that they need to repent or they're going to hell, uh, then you don't expect good treatment in response to that. So we preach the truth to them regardless of response. This is how they feel about it. So uh, enjoy the video. Amen. Where's Paul Salerno? He's the last one I seen with my banner. I need to get my banner back from him. Hey, Paul. I have no idea. I haven't heard anyone say yet. What is it? But anyway, you've heard it all this weekend, right? And you'll probably hear it again tomorrow. I said, because according to you, you said, And Brother Paul, I'll take that back from you, brother. Sure. Amen. So Chad, how'd it go for you today? Excellent. You were in a heated battle there for some time, brother. It was good. Yeah, it was good? Yeah, it was good. We had, I had, uh, I mean, can't even count how many awesome conversations I had with people. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, the question always is, why I, like, Why do you do this? Or why Why do you think this works? Or why do you think this is effective? Or could, you, could there be a better way? And, and uh, I just love that question because then it gives you a chance to really explain why it's biblical and why it's true and how effective it is in the sense that this is what God wants you to do. Right. To get that message out. Amen. So, uh, no, it was great. Good, praise God. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We're missing Ryan. Look at that. Oh. Let me go. You guys go up. I'm going to the compass. I don't know what floor we're on. So you don't talk about run three. It's the it's like yeah, you you come and into four clear, things you the whole gospel. Mm -hmm. So you don't talk about sin without saying you can be saved Thank from you. it, and you don't talk about salvation, which is saying salvation from what mm -hmm. you know. And you talk about faith, you're talking about repentance. Yeah. You're don't talking about repentance without talking about faith. Sorry. And you basically oh that's us. Basically memorize five verses in, in each book. You wrote with us, didn't you? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So what are we on three? 
yeah, we're in three.